What is going on YouTube? You are watching Relative Motion, the channel all about showing you the most interesting places on the planet and the best means for you to get there. And boy do I have a special one for you today, because we're going to be taking a look at probably the rarest remaining piston helicopter that exists today. I really do think the H-21 was really a machine way ahead of its time. It was one of the first helicopters developed and was certainly one of the first tandem rotor helicopters ever made. Now the reason they went for this tandem rotor design, at least I think, is the fact when you get into large helicopters that are powered by piston engines, they're pretty much all going to be powered by a radial engine. And while radial engines work really well on aircraft, I would say generally speaking they're not as well suited for a helicopter. And this is because of the large frontal area on a radial engine. It makes the engine hard to fit in a streamlined package, which is what you want obviously a helicopter to be, to make it quicker. So because of the large diameter of a radial engine, it makes it really hard to fit in the helicopter. And the other common design you'll see for a radial engine helicopter is to put it at the front of the helicopter, which is going to give it a really blunt nose. And then the pilots have to sit above that, making the helicopter even taller and of course more unaerodynamic. So I do think going to a tandem rotor helicopter design for a radial engine helicopter was definitely the way to go because with this design philosophy they were able to put the helicopter engine behind everybody and even behind the aft wheels creating one long slim fuselage which is a lot more streamlined. And then of course with this design it certainly leads to this thing having an odd appearance and giving it the nickname of the flying banana. Batter dip the cranny axe in the gut locker. And even the sagging sausage. But even for its odd shape, this was a remarkable performer, and I believe set all sorts of records when it came out back in the day. I would say on average this thing could go 20 miles an hour faster than similar radial engine helicopters. And I really think this has to do with that streamlined design like I've said from having a tandem rotor system. Which is of course one of the reasons they've kept this design for the version basically of this helicopter that exists now. The CH-47 Chinook. It is a much larger twin turbine engine powered helicopter which makes it much more modern. And it's actually getting into close to twice as fast as the H-21 was. However, the CH-47 owes some of its speed to having the same tandem rotor designed fuselage that's super streamlined. However, this unique designed fuselage has a bit of a downside, especially on this early model of the H-21 with its really bizarre fuselage shape where it's actually not a complete straight tube like most fuselages would be including like the one now on the CH-47 like I just mentioned. But the H-21 having this unique curved design of course led to having those unique names like the Flying Banana. Now while most of these helicopters were built for the military under the designation H-21, like we've mentioned throughout this video, there was a particular model of this helicopter called the Model 44 which further had an A, B, and C model. The A and B models were strictly passenger helicopters that held somewhere around 15 people at maximum capacity. However, the military version of this helicopter holds somewhere up to 20 people. So while the 44 A and B held somewhere around 15 passengers, they also made the 44 C, which is an executive model of the H-21, and held 8 passengers in first class seating. And I'm going to imagine in a club configuration very similar to something like a Citation X. However, that gets me back to the problem with this odd designed fuselage, is while you are sitting in this helicopter for the most part, you are sitting at an angle. Now I do believe this angle you sit at is a little reduced when you do get in the air, because the helicopter levels out a bit. However, this is just a guess and I don't know this for sure. But if it is true, I still think it makes the helicopter fairly useful, because you won't be at such an angle sitting there in your seat you'll notice the angle less. However, where I think that you're going to notice it more 
is when this helicopter lands because that angle is going to be increased. And then I do think you're going to feel the angle of the floor more just walking around in this helicopter while it's on the ground. But certainly one of the other features making this helicopter really unique is I think stemming from this helicopter's original military heritage, these have an option to put two external fuel tanks on the outside of this helicopter. In aviation, these are also known as ferry tanks because the idea of large tanks like this is to max out the amount of payload that any aircraft is carrying to be as much fuel as possible, giving it the longest range it can. But then of course, drastically limiting how much the helicopter can carry, especially as far as passengers. So for example, if you filled up both external tanks on an H-21 and the internal fuel, I'm pretty sure that would give you a fuel load somewhere around 900 gallons. And with that much fuel, this aircraft would have an incredible range of a thousand miles, which as far as a helicopter goes, is about as high as it ever gets. However, like I said, this fuel load, you're probably only gonna be able to carry somewhere around two to five people, and that's including the pilots. So having a radial engine tandem rotor helicopter that can travel a thousand miles isn't unique enough. If you are able to acquire this helicopter, you're gonna be the only one with one. Because yeah, there's only one of these left that's airworthy. Which, if I feature a vehicle on relative motion, I really try to do vehicles that are still out flying or moving around and try to not feature vehicles that have all been retired and doomed to an existence in some sort of museum at on a stick. Like has unfortunately happened to one of my other favorite helicopters, the H-25 Retriever, which was probably the smallest radial engine helicopter and tandem rotor helicopter ever made. And there was one of these flying around 10 or so years ago until it ran into a helicopter's arch nemesis, some power wires, and now sadly there are no longer any retrievers flying around. But I do like this helicopter so much I might do a video on it anyways. Because like I said of course in the last video, I do have a bit of an obsession with radial engine helicopters, especially if they're tandem rotors. So if you do somehow manage to pry this helicopter off of whoever owns it, which I doubt you're going to be able to unless you got a good chunk of change because a museum might even own this H-21. But if you do get a hold of this piece of history, please do me a favor and keep good care of it. Now if you think the idea of owning this piece of history as a private helicopter is a wacky idea, I'd sure appreciate a thumbs up down below, which helps more of these wacky videos come your way. And of course if you haven't, I hope you consider subscribing below, which really helps you see these upcoming videos. And until I see you in the next one, I'm James Cooper, and you've been watching Relative Motion.